uh, hopefully look at that um, with some slides that will be coming up as far as um, and so all of the chakras are have their geometric correlates um, which I think would be beyond our discussion today but it gives the the listener kind of an idea that geometry was so intrinsic to many systems both spiritual systems and meditation systems as well as um, you know ex art and architecture and, and things like that because one of the things particularly I think um, you know, in the Eastern system, it might be the idea of karma yoga. In the Western systems of, of spirituality, there was a belief that one could attain spiritual liberation through one's work. Um, and if one's work was ritualized and it, it became symbolical for a larger process of, of spiritual enlightenment, um, through one's work of, of building, of creating something, um, one could obtain a, a higher state of consciousness. And I think that that is probably true. It bears out, you know, in, in the field, I think, when, when you actually have that mindset that you're creating something that is unique and something that resonates with, with higher principles. Because that's the idea, because you're looking for this resonance, which if things have the proper proportions between them, the proper ratios, then they resonate, right? Um, it's like the idea of a, if you have two tuning forks and they are um, to, in tune with one another, you can vibrate one and the other one on across the room will set up a sympath sympathetic vibration, right? And I think this is the idea that they're trying to create a structure out of material that <clears throat> is harmonically proportioned to pre-existing patterns of energy in nature, you see. Um, and so, same whether, whether it's a three-dimensional, um, whether it was a work of architecture, whether it was a work of art, whether it was, um, you know, a, a rug that was being woven that would have the proportions in there, or a tile pattern on a mosque. <clears throat> it was the same idea. If you did a tile pattern on a wall on a mosque, the idea was that inherent in that tile pattern was a geometric module that was also found in the whole pattern, the whole complex of the structure as well. The idea again being that the part and the whole are reflections of one another. So those symmetrical measurements created a sense of resonance? Yes, somehow. yes. And also the idea that, you know, we ourselves are embodiments of geometry. The human anatomy is based on the fivefold geometry and the geometry of the golden section, you know, which is <clears throat> basically tells us that if we have any, any straight line, and we divide that line, <clears throat> we can, we'll create two parts. If we cut it in the middle, each part is the same size, and that is not a dynamic situation. It's a static situation where it's in perfect balance. But if we begin to move that dividing line, the two parts are asymmetrical. They're, they are no longer the same size. But in the golden section, or the divine proportion, we're looking for that one magic point where the ratio of the small section is to the large section exactly as the large section is to the whole line. You see that? So as this is to this, this is to the whole line. And that is the fundamental proportion of the human anatomy. If you take a person and they're standing vertically, and you take that golden section division, um, you'll find that as they're, if they're standing vertically, the golden section division will define the position of their navel, right? Now, when a human is born, you do not conform to the golden section. A baby, for example, will have their navel in the middle of their body. As you grow, you grow into this proportion. Another place that's found very prominently within the human body is the cubit, so elbow to fingertip, right? And where you then would divide that in the golden section gives you your wrist joint. So the cubit, here this would be the, the cubit, which is the forearm. Cubitus is Latin for um, forearm. Elbow to fingertip, then you, there's a space. Anybody watching this can feel on their wrist there will be a space. It's called the space of desktop. And there's a little hole in your wrist that really marks 
that division so that this is to this as that is to the whole forearm. And if you take your forearm like this and enlarge it to your full height, that space of desktop there will be your navel. And if you take that proportion and you make a rectangle out of it, that defines the shape of the human face. And it, and it goes, I mean, there are dozens and dozens of manifestations of the golden section in the human anatomy, but found all throughout the natural order. You find it in animals, you find it in plants. Um, and there's, a, there's a famous sequence that's based upon that. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. And basically the sequence is that you have every numerical value in that sequence is the sum of the two values that preceded it, right? So it starts 0, 1, 1, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, and so on, right? As you go through that and, and your numbers get larger and larger, if you set up a ratio, for example, 21 to 13, or then you add those together and you get 34 to 21, right? Um, what will happen is your numbers get bigger and bigger. Like the ratio of, of say, um, 8 to 5 approximates the golden section. 13 to 8 approximates it closer. 21 to 13 approximates it even closer. You know, 34 to 21, 55 to 34, 89 to 55. As you go through and the numbers get bigger and bigger, what happens is you're asymptotically converging in on this golden section relation. You never actually get there. See, you oscillate above it a little, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it. And each time you oscillate, you're getting closer and closer and closer to it, but you only get there at infinity, when your numbers get an infinite, infinitely large, then you're at that golden section. Now, what nature does is, of course, it approximates it because we're all different, right? So you might take some people and their legs are longer or their torso is longer or their arms are long and you measure them and they don't quite come up to the numerical value of, of the golden section, which in round numbers is 1.618 three three nine eight nine dot 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 meaning it goes on forever right it's an irrational number like pi for practical use you would probably round it off at 1.6 and be close enough or if you needed to be really precise go 1.618 most people will remember that 1.618 and and um it's pretty easy to remember but geometrically by using the geometry of the pentagon or the double square and the square root of five which is inherent in the double square rectangle you can create the golden section proportion with geometric exactitude right or within the limits of your your drawing capability if you could draw with infinite precision you could geometrically create that golden section but mathematically or arithmetically, you can't. You can only approximate it to ever finer degrees of precision. So artistically, if you're going to use it, you obviously don't need it, you know, out to 10 or 50 or 100 places. Two or three places is going to be enough, see. But if you know the geometric technique, you can then set it up and you will create a rectangle where the long side is to the short side as 1.618 is to 1. And that gives you that rectangle. And then that was the basis, for example, we'll see a slide here shortly that says, um, that shows the facade of the Parthenon. And it fits perfectly into a golden rectangle. So typically in, in the days of, of building, in, in the old days, there would be a template laid out on the ground, right? The geometry would be drawn out on the ground. Then carpenters would come in. For example, like if you're going to do a, a Gothic cathedral with that old Geival vault. Here you've got this amazing stonework that comes up and it'll, it'll come to a point, right? And then um, that's usually derived based upon the vesica, which we will look at shortly. The